Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Deanne, and I'm here to speak to you today about web scraping. Now, I could give you a boring definition of what web scraping is, but why not give you a really, really cool animated <laughs> animation about what web scraping is. Now, this is Cheerio, the killer whale, and he's going to describe to it, well, display what Cheerio, the library, does when web scraping. So we send a request to a server, and we retrieve back the web information. Cheerio takes us in, digests it, gives us back all the good stuff, and says goodbye to the rest. Now, you think, why scrape? Well, the main um, practical implication in an industry is web scraping is used to gather data used in data anal analysis. So there are many, reason, many tools in data analysis that require the data from scraping, such as monitoring the reputation of brands online. They see if they're going up north or south. Trends, what's in, what's out, all the stuff in between. Comparing things such as the price of competitors or whether you are shopping for something and see what you want to, I don't know, what's, what has the best price. Uh, for gathering listings, so all those cheap flights, websites, you can, um, they scrape all the data so that they can put, give you a one-shop shop for all the different flights in the world. And finally, to keep track of competitors and, you know, so you can see how you're doing compared to them. Uh, but then there's the issue of why I've used it. And I, because I'm not doing anything to do with data analysis right now, we're currently just finished our Grace Shoppers. And so the main reason I got interested in it last week was that Gabe told us about a week ago that we needed to seed our database with at least 100 articles. So I thought might as well seed with this rather than, you know, hard coding everything. So the man in front of you, his name is Erlich Bachmann, and he was the founder of Aviato. Here he's seen putting on his his armor now that he has to wear because he would suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome from too much coding. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to you. So I'm going to show you how you can write a very small function that will seed your database of thousands of items without you having to type for days on end. Two things you require are the request library and the Cheerio library. And now let's, I'll show you an example of how we can scrape some data. So let me get out of this. Okay, so here we have a boilerplate of a scraping function that I've created called scrape items. We request in the two libraries, request and Cheerio. We pass the URL down to our scrape items. We, it then inputs this to the request function, and which calls a callback function, uh, which takes a callback function as its second argument. The first thing you need to do in this callback function, which has three arguments, error, response, and body. The first thing you need to do is handle the error. After that, we create another variable with a dollar sign, which is a function from loading the body into Cheerio. After that, we can call on this body the child and parent. I'll get to those in a moment. And this returns an array. We can then call dot each of all of these and with the element of the array, perform a task. So you may wonder what the child and the parent are. So if we were to want to scrape a musical instrument website, for instance, here I have one just prepared. And here we have all the listings of all the items that we would wish to scrape for our, to see our database. So in order to observe it, we'll go into our console, look at the elements, and we can select one of these items. So we're pre-zoomed in here now, sorry. And so this is the element that we are highlighting here. And we can see from the element that it has an image source, um, image source attribute. It also has an alt attribute which has the dean, which is the make of the instrument, and then the rest of it, which is the name. So if we were to scrape this element, then we would be able to retrieve all, these, all this data. So I'll show you how we can do that. If we go in even further, that the other way, we can see that the class of this attribute is lazy, and the class of the parent above it are quick view and prod thumb 120. So if we go back to our boilerplate, the other way, and we input these two class type classes as strings. I'm just going to put that in there. Just a moment. What this should return should return an array where of elements where the where they are a child with the class lazy of a parent with the little class quick view. You can also put in other like grandparent. You can also put in other arguments, but we'll only deal with two for now because I think it's a bit excessive if you, for seeding. Oops. And uh, so we go into our terminal. 
which is up on your screen. And we say we run this file. Oh, I didn't save it, sorry. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, the space after where, sorry? Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, it needs a URL, of course, yeah, sorry. So we need to invoke this. It's giving us nothing back. We need to invoke it with our URL. There we are. And then we run it. <coughs> and because we get this big, nasty object, we don't want to deal with that. What we realize is that on the, what we want is the data on the class. So what we can do is, console, console log in this, console log this dot attribs. Save that. Give it another go. And here we get objects of all of the data that we scraped. We've got each object has a source, a class, a data original, and an alt. Our alt can be used to take the, the make is the first word, and then the rest is the name, and then we can also find the image. So let's say we wanted to create a, uh, we wanted to seed our database with, with these, all these properties. What we could do, firstly, to, uh, make sure that we're getting what we want. We can replace this console log with, if we, sorry, I just copy and pasted that, but. So we're creating an, in, uh, an instance of instrument. We're adding these, the name, make, and image URL based on the data given in this, and then we're logging the instrument. So we'll run this in our node console. And here we are, we have all the instances of, of the instrument, name, make, and image URL. So what I did here with the make was I just manipulated the name. I just put the name as the attributes alt of the object that we were being returned and the image URL as the attributes data original. And now what we can do is I've created a model, an instrument model. And I'm going to import that now. And then we can, rather than console logging, we can create an instrument and send it to our database. Might as well, console log as well, you know, it looks nice. And uh, we're gonna, so before I do that, I'm gonna show you that I have an, uh, a database called instrument DB, but there's nothing in it, there's no models, not anything. And now when I see the database, instrument DB does not exist, so. Instrument, oh, it's BD. So create that. And then we see JS. And it's console logging. And hopefully, with any luck, when we refresh this, once the program has stopped running, it should have seeded our whole database with all these objects, all these instances. Oh, we're in the wrong. Yeah, sorry. Instrument DB. Here we are. We've got the instruments. And there we go. So that's how you seed a database in the, with a couple of hiccups. And uh, in 33 lines. And if you're really. If you're, it will, as you can see, we've only got 20 instances here, but if you wanted more, you could observe how the URL changes as you go to the next pages. Create a for loop invoking the scrape items with that URL as many times as you wanted to. And on this website alone, I believe that there are, I mean, how many base instruments? There are 2,200, so if you wanted to see 2,206, you could do that all with this thing. Thank you very much for listening. Um, Hope you can now seed your databases without getting a carpal tunnel. Cheers. <laughs>